Now let's begin here with very pale, pale blue color. I think too intense. Now here's what we should do is maybe get a little lighter, actually kind of misty, almost white down here toward the bottom. I think that'll be very pretty. And as you can see, we're gonna do a little, a little uh, like a stream, some rocks, maybe make it a little bit of an autumn time scene, although there will be probably some green in it still. I don't know, we'll see. For now, I'm just trying to cover up the background. Hey, let's take a look at the painting that you guys did of my last one, your version of it. Oh, they came out so good, it's always fun to see everything that you're doing. So if you're interested at all in sharing what you've done with me and with everybody else, just use the special page or the information there on the screen and you'll be able to do that. And I'll get it in the next video if I see it in time. Well, now I'm gonna take a blue that's just, maybe got a little brown in it even, but not much brown, mostly blue, tapping it into the brush there. Okay, let's see, let's see. I'm gonna start right back here and create just a few tiny trees by tapping. That's all I'm gonna do. Just by tapping, that's pretty good, isn't it? I think so, I like that blue and brown combination. I did not over mix it. So I have actually separate blue and brown spots. Kinda hard to see maybe on the camera, but in person here I see because I didn't over mix it. I see those blue and brown spots. As we go down toward the tree, I think I might get a little lighter, not darker, but lighter to represent mist. I think that'd be very interesting. Clearly there's a lot of mist here. These wouldn't be all that blue because how many know that uh, trees are not normally blue? <laughs> okay, it's one of those days already. It's okay, we'll make it, we're gonna make it. There, wouldn't hurt to soften them just a little bit. See, just a few touches with that one inch brush, you really have something that's honestly almost, almost halfway, almost halfway decent. Now you could really go several different directions with this. I'm gonna continue just to brush in some color, tap in some color, a little of both actually. A little brushing, a little tapping, there's my color right there, just kind of a, oh, kind of golden color. A little bit of a green to it, sometimes a little red. You know, I'm just changing it up here as I go. Got my one inch brush so that it gives me some good texture. Now I would say this for sure, as you move back, I would allow that to become a little bit more on the golden side. I think that'll look good for the, the color scheme that we're going with today. Again, not too dark, that is too dark, so we'll lighten that up just a little. Don't you know you can wipe off your brush or you can add white. Both things will lighten the color. So sometimes, and usually, it's better just to wipe off that brush. Oops, that's too much, but we can actually, I'll show you later. I'll show you right now. You know, I was not paying attention. I, I do want a little meadow back there. Look how easy it is to get my meadow back. <laughs> That's great. I put a little more than I wish I had, but look, we're gonna make it work for us. See, so just, oh, oils are easy and forgiving, aren't they? Easy and forgiving. So now I've got to just do my little bushes and I'll leave that kind of intact back there. And you can do like one bush that sticks up, but not too many. There we go. Soft edges, soft edges. Okay, you get the idea. Now, because I've already sketched this out, I know my big rock is here. I know that these bushes separate the rocks like that and make that into two layers instead of one. It helps you pre-plan the painting. There we go. And because I did get a lot of this sorted out in my head in advance here, I can really dial in just where I want my dark shapes. Well, now I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to work on some of the dark areas, that's all we've been doing. Dark areas. There we go. Create some, this will be kind of some of that lighter grass. Of course it's lighter in the middle, that brings more interest to the middle. Make the river a little smaller than you want it to be because when you go to put in the rest of it, it does have a tendency to grow, especially if you don't want it to. Now if you want it to, it may, it may not. Uh, that's just the way it is. Get a little bit, uh, I see a little bit of dark, ooh. Well, I can't make up my mind what I want to do. Maybe I'll just take a little light, just a touch there, a separate, I don't know. That way we have a couple of layers of bushes and whatnot. You know, it's, it's all kind of globby and thick at this point. Don't let that concern you. I've got a blue shop towel. <laughs> I was even kind of getting concerned. We got a lot of paint up here, we got to get it off. You will not have a successful painting if you try to continue with this amount of paint. See, I'm just blotting it. I don't want to destroy my trees altogether. Actually, sometimes, depending on what's going on, sometimes you can actually get a nice texture this way. 
You can do it with a paper towel, but you end up leaving all these little fibers in there. It's not great. And we'll literally just rub down here and remove all of that. We don't want it. It doesn't do us any good. I'm going to drop in now a little bit of action here on these rocks there. One rock is right there. Good enough. Actually, a little darker on that side would be a good thing. Look at how much um, less shiny and glossy that is. I don't know if you can see it, uh, depending on the way the light is hitting it, but it, for me, it looks quite a bit less glossy, and that indicates that it's a lot drier. Now I'm going to take some kind of muddy, oh, I don't know, muddy gray. I'm going to underpaint just, just the rock areas here to fill in, and then, wow, really about all we ever have to do after that is kind of a weird way to say it, but you know what I mean, is get the, to get the, uh, the little river in there, the little creek. I think I'm going to move that over just a little. Okay, quick adjustment. And then let's get this one right there, quick adjustment. Excellent. So, you know, <laughs> that's why you sketch. Just make sure you like it where it is. If you don't like it, move it. You don't want to just get stuck with it. No, that's, that's the point of sketching is so that if you don't like it, you can change it, right? I mean, you know, it seems easy, but then you, know, you get stuck. You get stuck, you're like, oh, I just want to follow my, no, don't follow it. If you don't like it, don't continue it. So now I'm going to take some yellow and white here. Just oh, didn't mean to hit that gray in it, but I guess it'll be all right. A little touch of red, not too much red. Of course, red is a foreground color. If you put red in it, it'll come too much in the foreground, but oh, there it is. That's pretty. Just enough there to sparkle up a little something. A little bit right here. One advantage of doing this completely out of order is now I've only got two inches to paint instead of 12 inches, you know? The rest would have just been covered up. There. It's really no more difficult. What do you think? I don't think it's any more difficult to paint around this stuff. I'm not, I'm not attached to any of this stuff at all. I mean, I just spent not even two seconds putting it in. Well, there you go. Now I put real quick just a little shop towel on the rock that I just painted. And I figured, well, I'm just sitting here, not doing a whole lot, kind of waiting for that. I could go on to the foliage and stuff, but I figured before I do that, maybe I'll get in some of these little rock highlights. And they're not really the final highlight. I'm just more or less sculpting the rocks and just picking them out with some mid-tone kind of, a little bit of a highlight, mostly a mid-tone. There. Wouldn't hurt to darken this rock also. So just really moving around the rocks with dark makes a big difference, doesn't it? Just, oh, it just brings them out a little. One, one trap you can fall into when you're painting rocks is making them all way too simple and way too much the same. You know, if you do a lot of little strokes in your rocks, it makes them so much more interesting. That is a lot of different angles, you know, with your little strokes. It makes them so interesting. If you do very simple, just boop, you know, it ends up looking like turtles. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean there. So that's how you avoid turtles, do a lot of little strokes, several angles going different directions. Well, now, as you can see, I put in just a couple quick trunks. And now the more important part is actually pushing them in. You see, I'll leave gaps because otherwise you'll just bring too much of that dark color into the rest of the tree if you don't leave those gaps where there's just no paint. But this way, it kind of is, it gives it a nice, interesting look, you know, to have these trunks so many of these trunks really, if it just breaks it up, you know, you can do a lot or a little. That's what I'm saying is a lot of trunks breaks it up versus just one or two. Well, now I'm going to drop in this fairly large little dead tree stump thing, which I did have sketched in the original sketch. So this is, you know, it's all part of the, the plan here. There. What's nice is you have a lot of freedom here down, down at the bottom to adjust it however you need. Now, of course, maybe we'll rocks, we'll do little rocks and so on down there to do that. Maybe, you know, even use, you can even use some kind of golden colors and green colors, whatever. Rocks don't need to just be gray. So now I'm going to draw in or drag in, I should say, by tapping some limbs. See that? Just a few. And I'm using a fan brush. You may be wondering why, because it can give you some weird shapes. It can give you good shapes. It can also give you weird shapes, don't you know? <laughs> But, uh, but because I want these leaves a little bit on the sparse side, this is a good choice. Good. 
I don't want to overwork either, so you have to be careful. Don't, you know, don't tap too many. I mean, it's not, not careful, like, oh no, I'm gonna ruin, you know what I mean? Careful, like, don't go so far that you cover up all of the beautiful things that are happening. Now you only have to go so far with this, then you can stop, grab your detail brush, and add a little bit more if you want it. There you go, just a few. But that's more or less how we do the whole area up here. There's a lot of paint. There's so much paint in my brush. And I've wiped these trees off. I've, I've dabbed them with a paper towel to soak some of that oil away. If you don't do those two things, this is not gonna work. So again, I've got a lot of paint in the brush and very little paint here on the canvas. Very little, it's just stained. You really couldn't mess this up if you wanted to. There, that's nice. A little bit kind of, I don't know, almost old fashioned the way this one looks today. But I like that, or, you know, we won't make it symmetrical. We will break some of those areas up, but I just like the way it looks a little different and a little different is fun, isn't it? Now, right up in here, for instance, we can go and just touch using the corner of the brush, tap in a few sections where this just comes right out over the dark. Mm, that's good stuff. Layers, lots of dark, lots of layers. I'm trying to create as much of that shadow as possible. It's the shadow that's so pretty. It's not the highlight, it's the shadow. If the whole thing was highlight, you would not like it. <laughs> I'd guarantee it. Nobody would care for it. But because there's some shadow preserved, oh, it looks good. Now down up and through here, maybe we'll put a little green in it. You know, you can have some green. Yeah, this is supposed to be kind of a fall time, but there's clearly some green. I don't know about where you live, but here, if I look at the trees, yeah, there's some orange, but it's still mostly green and brown. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and begin to put a little highlight on these trees finally. You can see I did one more, but overall, just a lot of the same, you know, just a lot of brush strokes, kind of adding some detail here and there all around. A little more on the trees, just a lot of the same in this particular painting. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight with not necessarily the brightest color I could, and then I'll come back with my brightest color and maybe do an accent highlight. Just these quick, short, choppy strokes. There we go. Yeah, that works. Not perfect, but we don't, we're not looking for perfect. It's close enough for what, for what we're needing it to be today, I'd say. All right, there we go. Of course, if this doesn't stick, you know what to do. You gotta stop and wipe off the canvas. I'm using the, uh, by the way, I'm using a little quarter inch flat brush. You'd use anything, detail round brush would be just as well, if not better. There we go. Now on this big log here, of course the light's coming across through the forest like this today from left to right. So on this big log, we need to get us a little highlight, maybe the little, the little opening there in the log. I tend to do that when I do these open logs, or the broken logs rather. Do an opening there. Good. I don't know, it's just interesting. It doesn't need to be overly bright. It is kind of in the shadow here of the forest. Yeah, again, not perfect. Just enough detail that it looks interesting. We want it to look interesting. <laughs> and some red because with as much red as we've got here, it'd be kind of nice to tie some in, in the bark as well. And darker as you wrap around, that'll make it look like it's round. Excellent. I'm continuing to work in these little bits of detail, and this is where you really bring your painting to the next level. You could, you know, do this all really, really quick and then, and then kind of stop, you know. But if you take this extra little bit of time, and go back, because see, I slammed a lot of these bushes in fairly quickly. Now I'm just taking my time going with it, as you can tell, through the whole painting, doing lots of just little tiny touches here and there. No one big thing, no one special spot or, you know, nothing that's terribly interesting, but it's just a lot of repetitive little tiny strokes to create the, the look of a little bit more detail, a little bit more oh, vibrantness. I know that's you know what I mean. <laughs> a little more punchy on my highlights, a little more color, 
to the whole painting, a little more variety in color as well. So it's all just a matter of how far do you want to take it? So there you go. Mm, that's nice. Yeah, and that to me is fun. See, I'm, I'm not yet burned out as soon as I get burned out of this, doing this repetitive over and over again stuff. I will stop. I'm not going to keep going. I have to move any farther with it. But I'm having fun with it, so I'm going to keep going. This, you know, I may end up putting 5, 10, 20 minutes of just doing this in there. It just depends. So I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> just, uh, just make a note of that. I'm going to place in just a few blades of grass. We don't need a ton. Oh, we don't need that many at all because I don't really need, you know, there's a lot of interest and a lot of texture down here already. We, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. We don't need to overdo it to the point where it just becomes a little bit on the busy side. Oh, that can happen with the liner brush, can't it? Let me get over here. I've got something a little less thin. I'm going to try to make some small, tiny, tiny blades of grass. There we go. Very, very faint. Very faint. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And there's a couple more right up in here. A couple more right up in here. I'll do more, but that's pretty good for starters. Now let's do the trees. So I've got a little bit of brown, black. Now let me see. Let me hold that liner brush where you can see. There we go. Look at that. That's not bad. Just get a few thousand little limbs in there, really. Just as many as you need. You know me, I'll, I'll go like up here and just squiggle. Just squiggle. Makes it look busy. That's all you need, just busy. And down here. Pull in a couple. Excellent. Now let's jump over to the other side and just get a few. Well, that about wraps up this painting for today. I really enjoyed seeing how these more subtle colors work to create an autumn time scene. Just a little bit different and something not quite so bright as normal. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button. That helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.